We wheel them and we turn them and we rock them and we sound them and we temper them and laugh the rhythm sweet. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the Rhythm Suite. I'm your host, Felicia Renee, and today we'll be stepping into the world of amateur fighting. Uh, welcome back, guys. We're sitting here with Norton McLaughlin, aka NJ Max. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? <laughs> so, now tell us, how did you get into fighting? Um, I started for fun. You know, it was just a little thing I did. I always wanted to do it as a kid. Mm -hmm. Had a little in house tournament one time, I did it, I yeah. won it. And uh, ever since then, it's just been a fire that sparked. How old? Uh, I started late. I started real late. You speak to any fighters in the community, they've been doing this since it was kids. Yeah. I started when I was like 24. Really? Yeah, so I've only been doing this for six years now. So it's not too late, guys. It's never it's too, not late. too late. Never too late. <laughs> Always go, at, go after what you want. All right, so then how would you say that your Jamaican roots have influenced you being a fighter? My Jamaican roots definitely influenced me, man. You know, when you get in that ring and... A oh boy, I lick it. You want to lick him back, you know? <laughs> you just got to keep going, man. You know, you grew up in Portmore, Kingston. You know, it was tough. It was a hard time coming up when I was growing up. So that, that just strung me, you know, made me stronger, made me tougher, and uh, just gave me that strong will. Now, what would you say inspires you? My son. My son is my inspiration. You know, every time I go out fight, I win a title, I win a trophy. Just something for pass down to him, you know? Something he can look up to and say, my dad did this, so I can do that too, you know? So that's, that's my inspiration, man. Now, you could have been doing anything else. Anything. Anything at all. Anything. Why fighting? It's a good release. Yeah. It's a good release. It's a good stress reliever. Uh, you learn a lot about yourself when you fight. You know, you, you go in the ring and you're, you're facing somebody who's been training just for you. You know what I mean? So that tests you to see how much you can overcome. So when I'm at work or in my regular day life, obstacles come and go, but it's, it's nothing. Because I just beat a guy that was ready to beat me. You know what I mean? So work. <laughs> Regular life is nothing compared to that. You know, I know a lot of people who've been doing the gym life for a long time, yeah. even longer than I have, but never crossed into the ring. I guess they just have something inside of you. It has to be something that you want. You know what I mean? I know a lot of guys who have the talent, mm -hmm. but if they don't have the heart, don't go in the ring. It has to be something that's inside of you. you. You can't teach somebody that. You can teach them how to punch and how to kick, but you can't teach them heart. And that's when you can watch a fighter, you just see a guy just give up. You just know, say, yeah, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready, he wasn't for, ready for it. Yeah, it has to be something inside of you. A lot of people in the gym, my gym is full of talented guys. Mm -hmm. We have about 19 fighters because that heart is there. Mm -hmm. That heart is there. You know what I'm saying? Some gyms have a, a lot more people that's been doing it longer mm -hmm. with no fighters. So it's all about that heart. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have the heart, don't cross that road. We want to know more about your journey. Mm. How did you end up here? Mm. Wow, okay. When I first started this thing, I did the karate. Mm -hmm. Two years for fun. Me and my boy, we signed up one day after work and played around with it. But uh, it was something fun for me. So I kept going, watching the UFC and other fighting shows. I heard about this thing called American Top Team. Mm -hmm. So I looked it up. There was one that was local, so I joined it. And that's where my fire became. That's when the passion started. And I trained under my old coach, Rodney uh, Libramante. And uh, when he left, I followed him. And we started our own team, and then we grew from there. And then that's when my fire really sparked. You know, we parted ways on good terms. My new coach, Coach Eddie, he started a new, a new team, a new name. And so I came in at the right time. You know, this is my new home now. So this is never something you, as a kid, you're like, yeah, I want to be a fighter. No, this was not a... No, no, it never. Just, you just woke up one day and said... I woke up one day, I said, yeah, I'm going to fight today now. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I kick up one fist, so I'm just going to thump him in that fist. Like, no, you know what it is? I was never the fighting type. I was always the joker, the comedian kind of type. You really had to push me to my limits for me to want to fight you back. You know what I mean? But um, when I look at it, I don't really look at it as a fight mm -hmm. to say I want to fight somebody. I look at it as it's a test for me. It's a competition for me. You know, I look at it as it's something that I have to do for myself. Mm -hmm. So I go in there and, you know, he's mad and puffy face. I'm just relaxed because I'm like, this is, this is bigger than fighting. Mm -hmm. This is something personal for me. So I'm not in here to fight, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. I'm in here to accomplish something bigger than just this one night. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's bigger than fighting. I never really, uh, I was never the sports type. Mm -hmm. You know, I was never the athletic type in school. But I've never been as good at anything as I, have, as I am in this. So for me, this is just all those years of not doing something, finally being released into something with passion. So this is this is it. If somebody wanted to follow in your footsteps, what advice would you give them? Make sure, make sure that this is the path for you because when you turn your TV on and you watch Mike Tyson or Holyfield or you watch any kickboxing match, it looks fun. Yeah. And it's easy to sit on your couch and say, oh, I would have, oh, I would have. Yeah. But beyond the ring. 
the preparation is what's more important. So if you can't get through the preparation, the fight is nothing. Because you got to understand, like, a fight is one night. Mm -hmm. But this guy's been training for months, for one night. Mm -hmm. So pretty much you're overtraining. You're over dieting, you're overworking out, you're over, you're, you're, everything is over mm -hmm. just for one night alone. So you look at that one fight, you're like, why didn't he, but I would have, and da da da. That's nothing. The fight is the easy part, that's the fun part. There's the preparation, there's the dieting, the weight loss, the uh, weight cuts, the sauna in the sauna suit, dying, dehydration, away from family, away from your kids, the sacrifices, you know, getting punched in the face, getting beat up by your teammates. That, that's where the hard thing is. So anybody that sees a fighter or sees a competition and want to do it, go for it. It's a beautiful thing. When you win, or even if just to compete, you feel good about yourself. But if you know for a fact that you don't have that heart, and you will know. Yeah. If you know you don't have the heart, you don't have the patience or the temperament to do it, don't do it. Because once you start that road, it's, it's a sad road to walk back. Mm -hmm. To know that I went this far, but it's not for me. Let me walk. You know what I mean? It's, it's sad. It, it, it feels worse. So if you once you start, just make sure that that's what you want to do. Once you get there, it's a beautiful thing. But to cross that journey, that's that's where the test is. Once you get past that, mm -hmm. it's easy from there. Yeah, good to go. Now, a lot of people criticize fighting because mm -hmm. it's fighting, yeah. right? What would you say to these critics? You're on the outside. Mm. You're on the outside. You'll never hear a, a fighter criticize fighting. You'll never hear a coach criticize fighting. You might hear them criticize a particular fighter, but they understand the work that goes in. They understand the sacrifices made. So they'll never criticize a fighter. You know what I'm saying? So people who say bad things, oh, they're barbaric or they're beating each other up. Right, it's, right. You don't understand the art of the sport. A true martial artist is not in there necessarily to kill or to beat up even though that's you know a part of the job description mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's not really why you're there you're there for the art you're there for the respect you're there for the love you're there for the the, the passion of competition basically mm -hmm. to prove yourself worthy you know what i'm saying because if you watch a fight and two good competitors knock heads together after the fight they're hugging they're shaking hands they're sharing that moment of mm -hmm of warriorship, you know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's funny when people criticize fighters because you could always tell that that person is on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. They're like walking past the store, looking in, window shoppers, that's what you call them, <laughs> window shoppers. So I don't listen to the critics. I don't listen to the critics, I listen to the real fighters, the true uh, pioneers, the people who know what they're doing and the people who are a part, a part of their life. Other than, other than that, I don't listen to any criticism, yeah. And so somebody who is like fighting all the time and getting in trouble all the time, mm -hmm. a kid, mm -hmm. would you recommend that that kid join some type of fighting? Like is that is that the person who would necessarily- 50-50, 50-50, because growing up I was, like I said, I was never the fighting type, I was a comedian, I was mm -hmm. a funny guy, so martial arts help focus me. You know, it helps give me a, a structure. So if you have a young kid who's a little wild and is a little unorganized, martial arts would help, you know, get him on the right path and keep him focused. But at the same time, you want to be careful because some people, they just, they'll use it in the wrong way. Because you understand, I'm, you're teaching someone to use these. So I will never use these wrong. So you want to make sure that you're not just teaching the, the kid how to punch and fight. You want to teach him the respect portion of, of martial arts as well. Because with that respect part is what he really needs. He doesn't really need the, the punching and fighting because he already knows how to do that, right? So you just want to teach him that structure, teach him that, that respect. And that's what he needs. That's what he's lacking. And that's, go back to your first question, the people who criticize martial arts, they, they forget that part. Because all they see is the punching and the kicking. They don't understand the discipline and the structure and the, the respect that comes along with martial arts. A true martial artist would never be on the street punching and fighting and kicking, ever. Unless it's self-defense. But we'll, they'll never go out there and start a fight. And that's the difference. That's why criticism, I don't pay attention to it because they don't understand the true meaning of it. So I'm just going to show you a quick maneuver. God forbid you're in a bad position. You can use this to protect yourself. So the scenario is someone grabs you by your neck or grabs you by your shirt. It's the same concept because their arm is in the same uh, area. So what you want to do is you want to grab your uh, lead hand to their right hand. Okay, so you want to pull their arm off. It's a two-step pro uh, process. So as you pull their arm off, you're going to step back kind of forcing them to bring their body weight forward, okay? So one more time, they grab you by your neck, they grab you by your shirt, rather than trying to, you know, maneuver and, and, and wrestle with them, just grab their left, and as you step back, pull and peel. So once they have you by your neck, you grab their arm and you peel. As you peel, you're gonna take this right hand and bring it right across. So they grab you by your neck, grab you by your shirt, you guys are tussling, you guys are tussling, you step back, 
bring that elbow right across their face. You really want to aim for above the eye area. It's not a lot of skin there, not a lot of meat, very bony. So bone on bone, that's where that gash and that opening is going to be. All right, it's a very peaceful uh, maneuver <laughs> I'm showing you right now. So I'm going to go here and I'm grabbing you by your neck and we're pushing, we're pushing, we're pushing. And peel, yeah, so now I'm here. You want to bring this right across, boom. Okay. Right there. Okay. So I'm here, I grab you by your neck, you push, Boom. Now, right. there are a million different. <laughs> million different. Million different. <laughs> so many. How did you choose Muay Thai? Muay Thai, yeah. Ah. Wow, what's your right? <laughs> Muay Thai, um, well, like I said, I started in karate and mm -hmm. it, it was really fun. It was, it was uh, a lot of kicks and, you know, high flying mm -hmm. stuff. It's, it's a different feeling because it's, it's not just a martial arts, it's a lifestyle. It originated in Thailand and the slaves used to use it as an art form, dancing. It became a lifestyle, passion. So they use it as a release to get rid of their pain and their anguish. So when you do Muay Thai, you have your, your stance and you feel that energy and that power coming through. So it's, it's, it's a deadly art form, but it's such a beautiful art form at the same time. When you watch two traditional Thailand and martial artists do a demonstration and you just sit back and watch it's like wow it's like wow so if, if you don't know what Muay Thai is Google Muay Thai <laughs> and uh, just watch the original uh, Thailand warriors just just demonstrate something it's, it's a beautiful thing man if you watch a lot of movies now a lot of people are using it it's a beautiful thing it's deadly but when you watch it and you see it it's, it's a beautiful art form it's beautiful where does your passion come from knowing that I have my son watching me and, 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 and coming up behind me. Because like I said, I was never the athletic type, you know. You know, you see good basketball players, their kid is going to come up in the yeah. back. So I don't really have the trophies or anything like that to pass down to my son, but I have my belt, so I have my title, I have my record. So I just want to make sure that I put as much energy into this that I can, that when I'm retired and I'm done with it, I can package it and say, son, this is what daddy did with his life. So if I can do this, you can do it. So, so this is all for my son, you know what I mean? That's where my passion comes from. What's next for NJ Mac? What's next for NJ Mac? I'm still an amateur. I just crossed my 30 fight threshold. So now I have 30 fights under my record. Um, I want a couple more, because there's a couple guys that I need to, I need to talk to. <laughs> Uh, you know, talk to. talk to, we got unfinished <laughs> business. Um, so once I, once I take care of unfinished business and, and just, uh, solidify myself in the tri-state, um, we just had a conversation the other day on Facebook, just who's the top fighters yeah. in my weight class. And a lot of people's names moved yeah. around. So now I see who people think is the top. Yeah. So I need to, I need to make sure talk to those I guys. need to go talk to those guys about the, the top position <laughs> in the tri-state. After that, then I want to make, I want to go pro. Why do you love your job? I love this because it's a great way for me to express myself. I did, when I walk out fight night and you know I'm in the ring, the lights are on, people are cheering, and I look across the ring, I see my opponent, something, something happens. I don't know what it is, it's, it's unexplainable. And if you ask any fighter to explain that feeling, they can't. It has to be something you experience for yourself. You can't express that feeling, that walking out to the ring. You're nervous, you're scared, you're shaky, you're, you're happy, you're, you're sad, you're hungry, <laughs> you want to use the bathroom. Uh, it's just so many different feelings at once. Your body's just going through so many different feelings. But once, you, once, you, once I step into the ring, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's amazing, it's beautiful. It's just a, such a great release. You can't explain it. It's, it's something that you will never attain in your life doing anything else. What's up, world? I'm Nolton McLaughlin, aka the Victorious One, NJ Mac, and the rhythm sweet. <laughs>